Hello, I'm Laura Lynch, and you're listening to the summer edition of The Current. Looked over there, and he got distracted. He saw a, a raccoon coming our way. The raccoon falls right to the front door. There's a new general in charge of a battle being waged in the backyards and back lanes of Toronto. Mayor John Tory has had it with raccoons, sick of the cute but cunning creatures opening garbage cans and rooting through compost bins. They're uh, extremely clever, so if you could find a way to keep them out, I think the entire neighborhood will be grateful. <laughs> Jake had one kind of pinned pin down and he had his face right in his stomach and I was laying on the ground here. The two raccoons were aggressively clawing at her legs. She broke her umbrella, fending them off. I wasn't sure if they were going to ever leave. The raccoon is a polarizing animal. Many loathe those clever little garbage eaters, especially here in Toronto or Raccoon Nation, as it's called when the topic comes up. They're seen as vermin, a threat to health and to property. But there is also a passionate community of raccoon lovers out there. Listen to this. There we go. There's that little girl. What you doing? Would you like a hot dog? Do you want a hot dog? How's that? Here you go. Head for the steps. That is Jim Blackwood communing with a furry friend in rural Woodsy, Churchville, Nova Scotia. The 65-year-old retired RCMP officer is known to his YouTube fans, and he has a lot of them, as the raccoon whisperer. Every night, he feeds his fans by feeding raccoons and posting videos of the animals devouring the feasts he's prepared. One of his videos has been viewed more than 400,000 times. He's become a celebrity among his subscribers. And some of them don't just want to see videos. Some are actually coming from around the world to visit his little house in the country and feed his furry companions. CBC producer Mary Catherine McIntosh visited Jim recently at the height of maritime tourist season. Hi, how are you? Come on in. We're out in the middle of the church while on the river road, home of the raccoon whisper. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people uh, who have met me through YouTube are now contacting me and asking me to come out and visit the, the raccoons. So what we do, we book appointments now. We can't have a lot of people land at the same time, so I try one family a day. So I have a lady here right now, a uh, fool as you want to do, from, uh, she's from Cyprus, and she's been out every night feeding the raccoons till the wee hours of the morning, and she just loves it. I've been friends with uh, Jim Black on Facebook and I've been following his videos with the raccoons and I took the chance to come over to Nova Scotia and have an experience personally. <laughs> have you ever seen a raccoon? No, no, no. It was the first time. I only saw the raccoons uh, from the videos. We don't have raccoons in Cyprus. Actually, we don't have any white animals except the uh, ram. That's uh, white gold and the fox. That's all. <laughs> and there we go. There's that little girl. What you do? Yeah, this uh, type of videos that we put on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Uh, if I do a video, I do for both at the same time. Every night of the week, there's pictures and videos goes up. And uh, and if I don't post anything, there was a lady in BC called a friend of mine to see if I was all right. Because they thought something happened to me. There was no video. <laughs> Would you like to take a hot dog out of my hand? Here. That's a good girl. I wanted to have this experience, so let's put it this way, and get very close to them. <laughs> it took me 19 hours flight from Cyprus to reach here, but I think it's worth it. I wish people wouldn't hate them. Well, I have a doorbell that's uh, hooked up, and... Um, when they, when they walk up to the sensor, you hear this sound, and that's the sound that the doorbell makes. So uh, when I hear that, I know they're here. So I'll leave that on there now, and then you hear that ring, and they're here. Now they can eat from my hand. They got to know me. They are aware of me. And uh, the baby is grabbing my feet, you know, and he's licking my toes. <laughs> they're, they're very soothing animal to be around. Uh, if you have any kind of anxiety or anything like that, there's nothing 
it helps you more than just sitting out there with a raccoon and letting him hang onto your kneecap and eating a hot dog. Um, the first thing we start off with are uh, chicken hot dogs. And uh, I, I get them at the Giant Tire because they're a lot cheaper there. And uh, one time they had them on for 50 cents a pound. And, uh, and I went in and they only allowed me two. So the next day I went in and I said, I'll grab two more. Well, they took the restriction off. So I cleaned out the course and I took home 50 pounds. <laughs> and also uh, we do uh, hard boiled eggs. I steam them in the steamer here, and uh, they have to be peeled and cut and buttered. And uh, well, tonight we're going to make uh, start with the peanut butter sandwiches. That's usually what we do. And we uh, now my wife showed me this way, and uh, we just take the bread out like that, and then we grab the, the peanut butter out of the cupboard here. All this stuff is donated peanut butter. And we don't make it like a regular sandwich, we just take it and spread it on the bread like this, and just spread it out even. And then we just cut, hold it in half like this, and then cut it here right, right in the middle. Now we had one raccoon here, uh, Rascal. Uh, she lived to be 13 and a half, and she would not accept any sandwiches that were, uh, had crust on them. So I had to make her regular sandwiches, and we had to cut the crust off, and then she would eat them then. And another thing she was hooked on was uh, Tim Horton honey cruller donuts. And one night I came back, from, I was coming from Truro, and I stopped into Tim Horton's. It didn't have any. So I bought her just a regular donut, and I, I gave her to her, and she threw it at me. So anyway, I had... What do you mean? She threw it at me. She wouldn't want it. And so she hit me with it. <laughs> and so I went, got in the car, and I went to Stellar, and they didn't have any. I went out to exit 23 at Wendy's Tim Hortons and they had two left and so I bought one all the way back here to Churchville. Here she is sitting on the step waiting for the honey cruller donut and uh, once I gave it to her she was happy. So if something ever happened to me they just go back into uh, eating the way they did before. In fact they are eating in the woods as we speak. This is just dessert. But uh, I notice I, when I go in the woods, I find their scat and it's full of seeds and, and other things. I know they're eating out there, you know, elsewhere, berries and things like that. And they can eat. You know, uh, I was paying around between 250 300 a month. And that's, that's banana bread. And uh, our little baby's very fond of this. Uh, we go through one of these loads. Uh, when I moved in here in 2000, uh, I'd be, you know, my wife and I fell in love. We got married, and and she already had the raccoons here and and a, and a bunch of uh, cats. Uh, she passed away two years later, of cancer, and uh, but her wish was that I look after her fur babies, and she met the raccoons. I promised her that would happen, and uh, so I've been doing that ever since in her memory, and I love doing it, and. Uh, I feel like they're like, you know, part of my family and, and uh, I treat them as such. Well, not only uh, <clears throat> the people come from all over the world and they, they send me stuff too and uh, for no reason, just to be friendly. This uh, cuckoo clock from Germany, it just comes, I don't even know who they are, some of them. Yeah, yeah, this is it here, it came from Taiwan. <laughs> it's a beautiful shirt, and, uh, and I wear it quite a bit. <laughs> and then, of course, I got these little uh, raccoons collections, and they're from uh, various people in the States. One of them uh, sings, uh, We Wish You a Raccoon Christmas. I just grab a hold of this here. It's very exciting. You get, I think it's a contagious disease from Jim. <laughs> I want to feed them, you know, it's my, uh, it's my joy now. <laughs> and especially the baby, which I call child, <laughs> uh, he loves the cake. And it's nice for him. My poor mother-in-law, she, uh, she was 97 and uh, she had uh, cataracts and she couldn't uh, see very well. And I came home from work one night and uh, we had several cats and uh, Sylvester was uh, was outside the door waiting to get in at midnight, 
And then, so I let him in, and then I saw the raccoon sleeping beside her on the couch, watching television. And I asked her, I said, what's he doing here? And she said, who? I said, the fellow beside you. And she thought, I meant the cat, and she looked and she realized it was a raccoon. And, but he cleaned out all the cat food and the dish and everything. There was water all over the floor from the water dish. And, but he, and I went to try to move him. I was trying to move him from his back and he growled at me. So uh, he was one of mine. He was used to me. But he didn't want to move off the couch. So I, I uh, enticed him with a hot dog and uh, gave him a little taste. And he followed me outside. And we didn't let him in anymore after that. There they are now. Yes, two of them. Come on. Come on. Stand up pretty. Come on. Here. Here, little boy. I'm going to sit here. There you go. And wait yeah. for everybody to come and have their dinner. <laughs> this is what I think. <laughs> Jim, how would you make out what they like to eat? Uh, well, what I do, it was trial and error. Uh, we started with peanut butter sandwiches. That was, that was That's all we fed them at first. And then I said, gosh, they got to eat something else. So we tried hot dogs, and the hot dogs took right off, and then we tried something else, and there he's coming back again. Come on, here. You coming up? I feel happy. Was this a good trip? Yes, it was. It was a very good trip, and uh, very educational also. Not just adventurous, but educational too. They're my joy in life, really. That's what they are. I just love them. And uh, and I look for them every night of the week and uh, I've never been disappointed. <laughs> Don't come back up. Come on, look, look what I got. That was retired RCMP officer Jim Blackwood, known to his YouTube followers as the Raccoon Whisperer. He was in Churchville, Nova Scotia. Some people look at a raccoon, though, and see a feral animal scheming its next garbage raid, while others do see a potential loyal companion. For five years, Wayne...